Hi everybody, thank you for watching my video on physics. In this video, we shall talk about an experiment to measure the specific latent heat of vaporization of water. We shall introduce the experimental setup and mention how the limitations of the experiment will affect the final result. The principle of measuring the specific latent heat of vaporization of water LV is simple. All we need is to measure the amount of heat Q needed to boil away a given mass M of water. Then, the result is obtained by simply dividing Q by M, that is LV equal to Q divided by M. The apparatus used includes a triple beam balance, a large speaker of capacity at least 1000 mL, a high power immersion heater, a kilowatt hour meter, and a 0.2 kg water mass. In addition, since this experiment involved handling boiling water and hot steam, safety precautions must be strictly observed. Heat resistant gloves and goggles must be used. Let's look at the apparatus used. Firstly, we shall use a mechanical balance, that is the triple beam balance, to measure the mass of the water boiled away. Some textbook recommends using an electronic balance. However, this can be a serious mistake. Although electronic balance is convenient, it is not recommended in this particular experiment because most electronic balance are decided to work in a dry environment under warm temperature. Since water may spill out of the beaker when water boils, an electronic balance will be damaged unless it is waterproof. On the other hand, the high temperature may affect the accuracy of the balance or may even cause a permanent damage to the electronic circuitries inside. Finally, some electronic balances have a stability compensation, which is decided to give a steady reading even though the force acting on it may vary slightly over time. Such a balance should not be used to record a continuously varying mass such as the beaker in our experiment. Secondly, unlike melting ice by a low voltage 12 volt immersion heater of 30 volt, we shall use a high voltage 220 volt immersion heater with a rated power of at least 1000 volt. This is because water has a very high specific latent heat of vaporization. It is several times larger than the specific latent heat of fusion. It is also several times the energy needed to raise 1 kg of water from 0 degree Celsius to 100 degree Celsius. If a low voltage heater is used, the water may not boil at all. Even though the water boils, it may take a very long time to boil away the given mass of water. Since the time taken is too long, the heat loss will be too large to give a reliable result. However, when using a high power heater, we have to ensure that the heating element must always be fully immersed into water when the heater is powered on. Otherwise, the extremely high temperature will damage the heater almost instantly. Finally, a joule meter cannot be used because joule meters are decided to work at low voltage of 12 volt only. Instead, we should use a kilowatt hour meter to record the energy used. Kilowatt hour is an alternative unit of energy. How much joules correspond to one kilowatt hour? Pause the video for a while and answer the question. Please press the space bar to pause the video now and write down your answer. One kilowatt hour is the same as the energy output by a heater of power P equal to 1000 volt. Operating for a time period T equal to one hour. The energy of 1 kilowatt hour expressed in joule is Q equal to P times T equal to 1000 volt times 1 hour equal to 1000 volt times 60 times 60 second equal to 3 million 600 thousand joule. That is 1 kilowatt hour equal to 3.6 times 10 to the power 6 joule. In this experiment, the energy used is only a small fraction of 1 kilowatt hour because the 1000 volt heater will be turned on for several minutes only. However, the number shown on the meter is in kilowatt hour. Luckily, the energy meter has a disc inside that rotates as electrical energy is consumed. Therefore, instead of looking at the number recorded on the meter, we should count the number of turns that the disc rotates. In this example, the specification of the meter is 150 revolutions per kilowatt hour. How much joules of energy correspond to one turn of the disc? Pause the video for a while and answer the question. Please press the space bar now to pause the video and write down your answer. Since for each kilowatt hour of electrical energy used, the disc will take 150 turns. Each rotation of the disc corresponds to 1 divided by 150 equal to 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 3 kilowatt hour. This is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 3 times 3.6 times 10 to the power 6 joule equal to 24,000 joule of energy. 
In the ensemble song, the meter has turned one rotation. This corresponds to 24,000 Joule of energy consumed. Now, let's start the experiment. Half fill the beaker with cold water. Water should not be filled to beam through. Otherwise, when boiling occurs, bubble will be formed and a lot of water will spill out. Place the beaker on the triple beam balance. Cam the immersion heater so that it is fully immersed inside the water. Connect the immersion heater to the kilowatt hour meter and connect the meter to the mains electricity. Adjust the balance so that the beaker side is slightly heavier. Now, power on the heater. The water should be heated up gradually. When boiling starts, water will vaporize and the total mass of the beaker will fall. After some water boils away, the balance will restore equilibrium. Now, stop the heater for a while. Put a 0.2 kg wider mass onto the wall of the beaker. This will cause the beaker side heavier. Now, power on the heater again and start counting the number of turns made by the disc inside the meter. When equilibrium is restored again, turn off the heater and record the number of turns n made by the disc. The mass of water boiled away is m equal to 0.2 kg. The energy used to vaporize this mass of water is Q equal to n times 24,000 joule. The specific latent heat of vaporization of water is then calculated according to LV equal to Q divided by m. This experiment illustrates the basic principle of measuring the specific latent heat of vaporization of water. However, it is far from perfect, yet it is important for us to understand the limitations. Firstly, since when water boils, the beaker is at 100 degrees Celsius, a lot of energy will be lost to the surroundings. Extra energy is needed and the calculated value will be higher than the standard value. Secondly, the steam coming out of the beaker will condense on the cam, the heater and the beaker. When the water drinks back, extra energy is needed. Once again, the calculated value will be higher than the standard value. Finally, some water will bubble out of the beaker. Unlike the previous two errors, this error will cause the calculated value to be lower than the standard value because we need less energy to remove the water. Note that the above errors combined together may cancel out with one another. Question: Can you suggest improvement to the above experiment? Be the first to write your answer in the comments below. You are welcome to comment on the answer of other people. Let's summarize the experiment. The specific latent heat of vaporization of water is calculated according to LV equal to Q divided by M, where Q is measured by a kilowatt hour meter, and M is the wider mass used. The precautions in these experiments are, firstly, safety guidelines must be observed in handling boiling water and hot steam. Secondly, a mechanical balance should be used instead of an electronic one. Thirdly, the immersion heater must be fully immersed into the water to avoid damage. Concerning experimental errors, 1. There are heat loss to the surroundings. 2. Steam may condense onto the apparatus and drain back to the beaker. 3. Water may bubble out of the beaker. I hope this video can help you understand more about the experiment to find the specific latent heat of vaporization of water. Thank you for watching.